Hi, Cliff. Can I sit down for oh, a minute? Oh, sure. Go ahead. Thanks. Jody, how are you? How's Gavin? Wait a second. You want to know how I am, and then you ask about Gavin? Hold oh, wait a moment. We've already been through this before. Don't get her started. Have you heard from him? Yeah, he called this morning, and he really likes the people at the Playhouse. Well, great. When's he coming back? Pretty soon. See, what happened was, when he got there, the play was already in rehearsals. This way, he didn't have to start from scratch. How come? Well, it turns out they had this director, but for some reason, he had to leave. Mm. Well, that's not so bad. At least he'll be home sooner, right? Mm. Boy, I'm glad. I really miss him. Okay, I'll get your menu. No, I don't need one. All I want is a soda. Anything. Okay, soda, anything coming up. You better have more than that, don't you think? Uh, well, no, I have an appointment at 6 o'clock. Oh, with whom? I don't know. <laughs> Wait a minute, you have an appointment at 6 o'clock and you don't know with whom? Well, yeah, it's it's really like a mystery. Look at this. <laughs> Come on, you got to be kidding. No, I'm not. Read it. Jody Travis, if you want to know the truth about the portrait, Go to the Saracen Head Bookshop on Mortimer Place tomorrow evening at 6. Come alone, or you learn nothing. Eridu. Who sent this to you? Where'd you get this? Who is this Eridu guy? Well, I don't know if Eridu is a guy. See, Eridu is the word that's written on my portrait, and I'd like to find out what it means. Jody, you know, there could be a real, uh, wacko waiting for your son, you know? What makes you think there's anything mysterious about the portrait anyway? Well, I've always thought there was something. I mean, just the way it turned up, and nobody knows where it came from or who the model was. Well, you thought it was probably your great-great-great-grandmother. Your great-great-great-cousin or something. Yeah, but I don't know, and this person might. Anyway, I'm gonna find out in about a half an hour. Oh, Jody, I mean, you're not gonna go alone. Well, that's what the note says, Mitzi. Yeah, but that's dangerous. Does uh, Miles and Nicole know about that? Well, yeah, yeah, they know about the note. Well, what do they think? I mean, about you're going to see this person alone. Actually, uh, they don't know. What do you mean? Well, they really didn't like the idea, so I promised them that I'd ask Calvin or Cliff to go with me. And that's why I'm here. Well, that was smart. Look, uh, sure, I'll go. I gotta work. Um, let's uh, go into the bookstore separately so they don't know the way. No, 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 you don't understand. I'm asking you to go, Cliff, which doesn't mean I want you to. You're right. I don't understand. I really want to find out what this means, what, what this, this portrait thing is all about. And I'm afraid if I don't go alone, this person is just going to disappear. But if anybody asks you, if I asked you, then you just say yes, okay? Thanks, Mitzi. Yeah. See you guys later. a very intriguing message you left. What is the answer to the riddle? I think I figured it out, where Jeff Brown got hold of my life story. Well, explain it to me, please. Sit down. You want a drink? Yeah, make it a short one. <laughs> what does that mean? It's going to be a short answer? Yeah, it's a short answer to a very long, long story. I didn't think I'd ever tell you about this, because I thought I would just bore you. Does it have something to do with Switzerland? No, it has something to do with Vietnam. You never told me much about when you were a Marine. No. I didn't think you'd be interested. It was just boring. Boot camp and all that. But as for the war, I was involved in it for a couple of months before it ended. It ended for uh, most of the guys, anyway. But not for you? No. Nope. My war continued for a while. Did I ever tell you I was a shaved tail lieutenant? I don't know what that means. That's just a guy that's new at the job. There are a few jobs that you have to get good at, though, and fast, if you follow my meaning. I took some patrols out. There were six patrols. I took them out into the jungle. And I came back without a scratch. And then, one night, right before a major evacuation, there was this huge firefight. It was, it was real bad. I'll save you all the gory details. What happened was, I got knocked out by a mortar shell blast. And the next morning, I found myself on this trail walking north. <laughs> Parade of one. I was walking to the prison camp. And you were the only one? Yeah. I found out later, after the war, a couple months, that that whole patrol had been killed. I also found out that I was listed among the MIA. Missing in action? Presumed dead. And that's where this guy Jefferson Brown comes in. Jim, where's the connection? The files. The personal files, the military files, my diary, all the papers. I don't have any relatives. And so they put them all in a hermetically sealed envelope and they sent them to Washington. 
Washington where Jeff Brown was. Exactly. He had access to my files. So I figured he found my stuff and he decided to adopt my life story. I guess he didn't mind because he figured I was dead. But you weren't dead. Oh, Jim, I know that that's the answer because I know that Jeff had access to those files. And do you know, when he was pretending to be you, he told me a story so similar to the one that you just told me to explain how he'd been wounded and ended up at my father's clinic. Oh, it's, it's just so despicable, though, to steal one man's face and fortune and another man's heroism. Yeah, this guy's a real turkey, all right. But we're putting it together. Slow. Hello? Who is this? Well, it's Sky Whitney. Finally, officially, Sky Whitney. Well, uh, what is it you wanted? Well, we've been through such uh, strange circumstances lately. I'd like to be able to make it up to you, take you out to dinner tonight. Uh, I finally got something to celebrate. Well, I realize you do, and uh, my congratulations, but I'm sorry I'm busy tonight. Uh, maybe some other night, then. I don't think so. Goodbye. <laughs> cases I've ever heard in this office, and I've heard some pretty weird things. Well, you in can't here. blame Mr. Whitney for being a little bit short-tempered. you imagine what he's been going through? Sure. Nobody believing the truth? I'm trying to get your identity from a dead man? And fighting a very determined widow, let me say. Yeah. She's no pushover. And she might have gotten away with it if all he had were that forced confession. Forced but true, obviously. What do you think she's gonna do now? She's gonna have to give up quietly. And she doesn't have any other recourse. Well, he's got another recourse. He could charge her with complicity to commit fraud. He'd have a good case. Mike would call it a prosecutor's dream. Although I, I know he hopes it won't happen, just as he hopes Raven's not going to bring charges against the people involved in that scam. She's got too much to think about anyway, right? I must tell you, though, that I would like to bring charges against one of them. Oh, yeah? Who? Nora Fulton. Why? Well, it's because of something she did last night. What did she do? Well, she made up her mind she'd pay the Kavanaugh's a visit, except she chose a night that uh, we weren't home. Nobody was home except for Adam and Mrs. Goodman. I don't understand. Why would she go to your place? She was tossed out on her ear. And for very good reasons, uh, which I'm not going to go into right now, except that one of them was that she didn't get along well with Mrs. Goodman. <laughs> they used to go at it toe-to-toe? -to -toe? Yes. It wasn't a very fair fight. Anyway, she came to see Nicole. She had the wild idea that Nicole might be persuaded to hire her again. Oh, yeah, sure. Maybe she's desperate for a job. Anyway, Mrs. Goodman tried to get rid of her, but instead Nora faked a suicide attempt off our terrace. That woman's crazy. Crazy like a fox. She tricked Mrs. Goodman into following her onto the terrace and then locked her out there. Now, wait a minute. This is getting to be serious. When we came home, Mrs. Goodman was still there. She passed out in the driving rain. See, it was a particularly vicious thing to have done to her because, as Nora well knows, Mrs. Goodman suffers from acrophobia. Miles, this is pretty close to a criminal offense. In fact, it's close enough for me. I think... I think Nora Fulton needs a little scare of her own. Hello, Nora. May I come in? Oh, of course. How'd you know I was living here? Well, you left your forwarding address with Mrs. Whitney, remember? Hmm. I, um, I see you live on the first floor. What's the matter? You afraid of heights? Did, I mean, I suppose you know that I was at your house last night to discuss the possibility of employment. Yes, yes, I know you were there. Mrs. Goodman told me all about your visit. Well, I guess she wasn't very thrilled to see me, I mean, because of the misunderstandings between us. Mm -hmm. You must have had quite a misunderstanding last night for you to lock her out on the terrace. I, I did what? Was that your idea of a funny, practical joke? And knowing that she was afraid of heights must have made it all the more amusing for you. Mrs. Kavanaugh, I swear to you, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, come on. Are you trying to tell me it never happened? 
I told you, I did go to your house to talk to you. And if you heard the language your housekeeper used with me, well, you'd lock her out of your home for good. Oh, so you just decided to do that for me, is that right? Please listen to me. I went to your house to talk to you, to patch up the differences between us. I mean, the only reason we argued in the first place is because of the mistake I made about Shink Savory. But she's dead now. We, oh, we, shut we... up. I mean, we could just forgive and forget. Look, not everything can be forgiven. Or forgotten, and especially not what you did to Mrs. Goodman last night. Now, to me, that is a form of assault, and that is a criminal offense. As a matter of fact, my husband is talking to Derek Mallory right now. But it's a lie. When I left your apartment, that woman was still in the living room. She was banging on the elevator doors. Then why did we find her on the terrace, locked out there, lying in the rain, half dead with fright? She locked herself out. So you'd accuse me. That is ridiculous. It's true. She was afraid you'd hire me back, and you're so stupid you could oh, answer. No! Now, I almost hit you. I hit you once before. Don't you dare tempt me to do that again. Yeah, I remember that. I remember that very well. In fact, I'll never forget it. Never! Raven, you must believe that I'm doing this as a friend. I have no bias in this matter. I'm not here as the district attorney or an officer of the court. In fact, I hope we can avoid getting into what could be a disastrous legal battle. Well, will you just tell me what happened? Obviously, it's in his favor. Tell her, Mr. Carr. We were able to get some information, reliable information, about a distinctive physical characteristic which distinguished Jefferson Brown from Schuyler Whitney. What do you mean, a, a characteristic? Jefferson Brown had a distinctively shaped scar on his back. You couldn't have missed it. Mrs. Whitney, it was kind of shaped like a backwards question mark. Well, I never saw any scar. You must be mistaken. You mean you never saw your husband's naked back? There is no question about the existence of the scar. A medical report made while he worked for the State Department established it, and a second autopsy has just been performed. It's there. And I have no such scar on my back. I trust you don't want me to prove that here in your living room. I should say my living room. You're lying! You're all just lying. This is just one big conspiracy. You just, you want to punish me just because of what Sky did to Gunther Wagner and Bobby Gerard. I assure you, those crimes have nothing to do with this one. This is clearly a case of outright fraud. Well, I am not giving up my house. And I'm not giving up my name. You may have to give up more than that, Mrs. Whitney. What do you mean? I'm talking about jail. <sighs> Sky, not. Is this really necessary? Well, you heard, Mr. Carr. A crime was committed here, a very serious crime involving millions of dollars. And as I also said, Mr. Whitney, we want to avoid a legal confrontation. Yes, but I may choose not to avoid it. I may choose to charge Mrs. Whitney with fraud. You wouldn't. You are his wife. You shared his secrets as well as his bed. Well, I didn't know the truth when we were married. I didn't find out that he was Jefferson Brand until... <sighs> Uh, Mike, may I suggest that you allow Raven some time to herself now? Time to digest all this and, and then decide what steps to take. That's agreeable to me. Very well. But these steps better be taken soon. I'm tired of living like a pauper. I'll be in touch with you, Geraldine. Take care of it. It's a sloppy track today, so I'd say put a double saw hook on Lando Lips. Lando Lips, what do you say, Daddy? No, no way. He doesn't run too well. I'll say bubble gum. Bubble gum. Deuce on the nose. Yeah. 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 Mitz, can I talk to you? Hey, hold me. Hey, look, yeah. I think we made a big mistake. You shouldn't let Jody go to that bookstore alone. What you're so worried about? I go to the bookstore alone lots of times. Yeah, but you don't get strange notes from strange people. I mean, we don't know who wrote that thing. Cliff, I don't know. She didn't want you to go. You heard her. Yeah, I also heard her say that she told Miles and Nicole that I was going to go. Now, that makes me a liar. Cliff, you know what this whole thing is? 
It's a gag. I feel it. You know, it's probably that guy that Jody told us about. You know, the one who's painting her portrait. What do you mean? Okay, the guy wants to ask Jody out, right? He doesn't have the nerve because Gavin's around, so... So he sends her a mysterious note. Mm -hmm. Hey, it's very romantic. Only you'd think of something like that. You don't look convinced. I'm not. Look, even if this is a joke, you already had one practical joke go bad. I think you want to go browse through that bookstore, okay? Okay. Well, now, be careful. Yeah, I will. Um, put this on my bill, will you? May I help you? Uh, oh, yeah, maybe you can. I had an appointment to meet somebody here at 6 o'clock. Oh, come in. Someone was here. He asked me if young lady had been here. It's funny, I'm only a few minutes late. Did this have something to do with a painting miss, a portrait? Yes, yes, it did. Did he say anything about it? No, he just gave me envelope to hold for you. In the back room, please, right this way. Can I see it right here? Mortar of Eden. Hey, this envelope is empty. 